me. And then Bundy says, oh, can we have a photo? Come on, John, take a photo. And the fellow says, no, 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 no video. Oh, he came out the front and, and, uh, and uh, did a hongi. So, obviously, they have accepted the presence of those three fellows. And then we went to the courthouse, it was exactly the same. And then to the lawyer that did the case for John Key. And all he has to do is pick it up now and force it. But uh, I've, got to, I've got to go back and on Monday and uh, to the lawyer. I'm going to wait for him to ring me back to take that to the next level. It's all uh, law now to deal with the, the chiefs. Your, your, your fullest part will come with Kingy on the other the flip side of the flag. There are two sides to it. So these fellows will deal with Britain and you fellows will deal with the land. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. So Bundy, Bundy and them have to get the earlier history done back to 1820 and then you fellows pick up from the 1835 under the Bohukawa Bo Bo tree. That's how. The, yeah, that I've got it in the right place, so that the queen side is addressed and the king side is addressed, but we keep them p apart so that the Maori government can deal with it directly. They have to deal with the government in Wellington, and the British one is dealing with the Navy side of the British Navy and the Navy here for our protection, right? So that's what that is all about, our protection of our country and, and the Pacific Islands. So that's, that's, that's where that part with Bundy and them come in. Mm, mm. It's a little bit, uh, looks complicated, but that's the way it will unfold and some more Wanangas will bring it right. It, it will go back how you people are there to pick up and carry on. But the other guy that came with Kingy dropped in a lot more history. He was, because they've been watching as well. What's his name? Oh, uh, John. I follow John. He, he's from, uh, um, where the hell is he from? Oh, uh, Bundy or no. But, but you know, but his name was John. He's he's been to Indonesia, and he's bought some guy out of there. Where this is where all the wealth has gone. So he's gone right into where that part I'm covering, where the missing gold is. So he's jumped in there to cover that part. But um, Bundy was a bit more interested in the spiritual side, not the money side. And so they've put their bit in for Ngāpuhi to cover that with Hōraki, okay? Yeah, so it's hooked the Hōraki and it'll hook the Tainui and Wizard to go together in, in all histories. So all I'm doing is putting the, the legal into the flag in both sides. That's why Georgie's there to to address the issue of the 1835 side and Bundy and them for the 1834 back to 1820, the period that they've hidden, right? For the banks for themselves. That's what John Keir and Judith Collins, they're playing around with it. Now they're on notice. They're, they have to cough up where did the money go other than to the New Zealanders and to the chiefs. They took it for their own business. And Judith Collins, where did the trees go? Who's, whose trees are they? So there's another thing that just happened. And these things, they're still playing around with, with, with the resources for themselves. And so that, that hui plucked that marae to all that land in Auckland, the business. It sits there right in the business hub connected to Hokkien and Kaitai. There, that's the original history before it went to uh, over the other side to um, Okiato, to Kororareka. It all started in the Kaipara. Where you fellas are. Yeah, it, it, it all, that's where the 
beginning of the contract started. And so you fellows are in the right place to come to that Molai where me and Mohi put everything together. The thing with Mohi was it was the Freemasons that drove him into the legal instruments inside the magistrate court. That's why the only way to deal with that one was to open that magistrate court there. You've got one open at Titi, you've got one open in, in Waitangi where you kicked it off and opened up in Te Hapu. There, there's those magistrate courts ready to enforce. Yeah, to enforce what we just did from those King William IV Acts, 1984 pages. We can pick any one of those and plug it up against them. So now that lawyer that signed John Key has to adhere to it because it's on the record and it's on video. I've videoed them in the police station and in the courthouse and at the lawyer's office. You see? It puts face, live face on, on a video as better than an affidavit. Yes, you put some, you put his face on some corridor then. Whose face? The lawyer. Yeah. Not, not, no, the, the lawyer wasn't there, but the other one there, the partner. So, he's, so, he, he said no. Troy was got to got to accept the document. I said, no, you you you're here. You give it to him because he he's already got the files. And so he says, oh hang on. So he went into his office, got on the phone, and put me on the phone. See. So now that lawyer, I have to sort because I haven't paid him. That's why he won't do anything. If I paid him, it would have been all over to recover the Cook Street. I just didn't have the money to pay anybody. That's been my biggest problem, money, to pay the fee. Okay. So, so if we look at it the next time around, I, I, I go on Monday to see the lawyer, how much? It's better to pay him how much than to get Britain to do it, because it's going to cost heaps over there. I'm trying to avoid big fees, because big amounts of what I'm claiming is going to attract big fees. So if I pay the lawyer to go and get Cook Street, it will keep control back to ourselves. Rather than go to Britain. We've got the option of going to Britain, but if we can do it without going to Britain, that's going to save a whole heap of trouble. Or not trouble, but expense. Added expense. Hmm. So we should see a, a, a manifestation very soon be like. That's right. It could be next week. As soon as I get the okay from the lawyer, and he only interested in getting paid before he does anything. He's a QC, and he won't he won't do anything without being paid. And the other Gray Mallet, he was a private investigator. He wouldn't do anything without getting paid either. So I had no money to pay anybody. That's why I just parked it up and carried on till everybody caught up. Now that your followers are caught up, then action. So all, all of this is, they have to take this seriously. You see, Bundy and them didn't want to, you followers to sign it because it's, it's, it's the older history that you didn't need too many people in it. And then your followers will sign the one king he's got for Titi Marae to put the, put the thing back in. He's got to open the Marae and put everything back in there again because of what happened there and they closed the gate on us. You see? So now he's happy. He went away happy uh, with uh, Bundy and him and he signed the proclamation. He backed up the proclamation from, uh, uh, from, from, from Rahini and to put things back in the Marae. So now he can handle, handle the both marais to make sure this goes through before the New Zealand wars and Peter Peroni and, and claiming our flag for themselves. That's why we're getting in now before the 28th of October when the government will have its own celebrations on the 28th of October with this flag. We're, we're telling them don't use it. You're not to use it. 
Any more? They had this play on, uh, on uh, Ben Mortimer's bushel. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's fine because it's, that's where it belongs. Yes. Them, yeah. yeah, so you you follow as well, but now now it's taking shape for its real reason. It's got it's got a very powerful flag. When when it when it got past the police yesterday and got past the courthouse, they just stunned. Because they knew it's caught up. It's caught up. You got you got you got real old time chiefs there, not not the Iwi's chiefs. Right? You've got the you've got the ones the British will listen to. The British will listen to you guys because they know how it works. It's just they won't tell you. They'll just wait for you to find out. Yeah, I think we need to have a wana. Uh, wana. Yeah, that's right. That's right. When you first call a wana, I'm in there to give some more. To highly familiarise ourselves with what's happening. Yeah, because you own it. I'm just giving it back to you. But it's too much to be thrown at once. But uh, yeah. uh, 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 what's what's her name? Uh, Annette got it straight away. She yeah. just she just got it, and she she said, "Oh, she come and made us some breakfast." And she said, "Oh, you fellas can come here and talk all the time." And I said, "Well, you want to know about land? Let me know, and I come and tell you fellas how to how, how to get that other piece of land on the, on that cross lease." Because I'm familiar to how to do the titles and where the diocese has, has leased off the other bit and she's trying to get it back. I know all about those things, but I need to look at what she wants to do to finance the place like for your fellows and how it's going to fit the budget. I've got to put all the budgets together for, the, for what we're claiming, to give the bill to the British. You see? They make, the British will make them pay out. Yeah, yeah, but the Cook Street, that's that's the that's the camel's back. Break that, break the lot. Uh, well, we could be, we, well, we need to concentrate on the uh, uh, on the straw man's hay to. to that's right. To cook, uh, cook, cook Street. Yeah, that's right. Pay pay the lawyer's fee, and that's the minimum that he will do it, and put me in office. Once I'm in the office, uh, out comes the out, out comes the power note, and I start writing. Because they're already in the bank. All we had to do is get me in the office there and I'll start doing the transactions. Uh, I wonder how much we will be looking at for the lawyer. Uh, well, I'll find out on Monday. I'll find out on Monday. I said to his partner, I want to know the bill because I owe him for how much all the work he's done for nothing yet. I haven't paid him yet for those, all those hours he put in. And he's got all the documents there. He's got all the legal documents. He signed them before they went to the High Court in London. But he wanted, he said to me, John, I want the contract for the tidal turbines in South Korea and build it over there because PricewaterhouseCoopers approved it. And so that gets thrown in there as well on, on, on that project. And he wanted to go right through the Pacific because he's the contract, uh, commercial contract lawyer for, for Higgins in Australia. Yeah, he's... Uh, my, my, my niece got cremated today. Oh, yeah? Yesterday. Okay. And she was here at the mines in Western Australia. Yeah, so there you go. All those things there are affected by what, by what we do. Because those, those titles there are the Queen's titles. The Georgie job has to sort that out. We have no problem on this side. With the Whakaminia has no debt problem. All that will be handled by Georgie on the other side. She can't go and play with, uh, with that for ever in the day, but she'll rely on funding from this to get her going. You see, but that's up to the fucker mini, huh? How, how... Well, 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 I, I, I think, I think we will need to uh, find out what the bill is. Yeah, that's right. Then we'll have to have a little whisper in her ear. That's right. It's, it's minimum. I'd say it might be about five, ten thousand to twenty thousand. Yeah. And that's yeah. it, that's it. If he gets the money in his pocket, he go and do it. You might have a mechanism for us to, 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 to get the lawyer done. 
Yeah, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm focusing on next. I, I'm focusing on how to how to pay him and make a deal with him. If I make a deal with him with the tidal turbine because he wanted to use South Korea in the shipping yards and Hyundai and Daewoo, I, I set up a contract with them, and he wanted to take it over and 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 because he's from there, and they got a free trade from there and here, they can build the thing in no time. You see? So if I make a deal with him, he, 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 he'll he go ahead and arrest one property. He will do the arresting, not us. We won't get mixed up in that lot, but it's law. I'm in the law to make the law work for us. I, I keep on the bank. That's my job. The bank, the law and the transactions. To transfer it back into customary title from that other title and take the mortgage out. And take the mortgage out of the land and go on to the tidal turbines and any other means of financing. So the PricewaterhouseCoopers has approved that tidal turbine project because of its big figures. It's got, that's our economy. That's our economy. Yeah, we've got to make sure that we're, we're floating before... That's right. Yes, so if I get cooks if I get cooks free, that's two point seven one five billion. That's its value of all the assets. I've got all the inventory done on it since two thousand eight. So I draw off that straight away with a bank note in the bank and get overdraft and start paying things. Well it would have gone up I know ten years ago. Yeah, no, well I've got I've got an overarching value of the ten a value of a trillion. I got big notes that like the Rothschild uses. I'm, I'm using the big trillion pound notes to go straight over John Key's head and draw off it. We, we can draw off it, but I've got to, I've got to bring the British in because their, their military is going to cover us for security in the Pacific Islands and here. You see? They get, they get their cut out. The British will get their cut. So I'm going to go on and live in, in Westminster and operate us from there. Instead of Jerry Mat Mataparai. Yeah, I saw, I saw an interesting word in uh, one of those documents you had. Yeah? It, it, uh, it's in a couple of places there and it was the word tithing. Tithing. Work what? T H I T H E. T H I T H E. Tith. Tith. Yeah, well, those are tithing. Yeah, so those are titles. That's right, giving over ten percent to the church, and yes. that, that's what they call tithing, tithing or teething. Tithing, tithing, yeah. Yeah, that, that that that's that's part of the 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 system of the land tenure. Yeah, yeah, that's what we need to do. So, so, so in order for us to get further blessed, we need to uphold those principles. Yeah, so the Fakamini and you fellows will do that. You, you've got to administer the land. The the Maori government has to come second place to you fellows making the rules. The Whakamini has the first place above the Maori government. Yeah, I got quite surprised when I saw one of the first things I saw. I, I just let them roll. I, I just I just brought them in so that, because it's Alfred Mitchell's Tupunas that sold the land in Auckland, the Manukau titles. They sold it from Sydney, his, his ancestors, because he comes from Australia. He's, he's the one with the, uh, um, what's his name, Jamie Peters, that sold the land here from Australia with the, uh, uh, Doug Rickard Bell. They, they, they came from Australia to sell the lands in uh, Gulf Harbour in, in Auckland, down on the waterfront. <coughs> so, but <coughs> we don't worry about that, we just worry about how the Whakamini is going to operate financially. And this is what I'm setting out for them to, to run financially, straight off the bat, from that marae. From that, from that, you follow us, marae. Because that's the closest one to One Tree Hill and Cornwall Park. There's a big building going up in Cornwall Park. That's the British Empire building connected to us straight to Britain and the British military while protecting the Pacific Islands and us. They'll jump to it because they know who we are then, who you are. They know now that you have been identified as the original contractors 
to Britain, not to Australia, to Britain. See, so, uh, yeah. So, okay, no trouble, that's how it goes, and that, you, fellas be, you, you fellas belong to it, okay? Okay. <coughs> that's um, Willie Pater. I'll just keep in touch with him because it's their motto that let us go in and have extra time uh, for a koha because this is about them. I'm going in there to give all the information back but there's truckloads to throw at them and expect them to just pick it up. They did yesterday. They picked it up with a bit of slow talking to explain it clearly. I think my head was all right yesterday but today it's had it. It's, it's, I just had some, uh, some Epsom salts and, and baking powder to clean my meow because I've been eating too much. Eat too much. Dear, yeah, I, I, I mixed that. I mix this stuff with that stuff. You, you take this and put it in the hot water and you, and you use it. It'll kill it. It'll rip the guts out. I just ate too much. I, I'm, 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 I ate too much. Which is not a, not, a, not a lot. I didn't eat a lot. But it was sufficient enough because I've gone down on my diet down and these are my readings and I'm not happy with it because I have to get back on my regime. When did I do it? Um, I wrote it down somewhere, hang on. Let's see, quite it. Oh, here we go. Today, Saturday, 4.54 p.m. 30th of September 2017. My Fitbit here was 60. I've been walking around in 67, but 60. My Oxy, the little thing on the finger, the left one was 68.97 on this one. This one was 69.94. This one was 66.97. And this one was 1797. Uh, and then on the arm, on the left side, the blood pressure went up to 216 before it cut out. When it pumped itself up. Extra. It went extra into 216. Its reading was 174 over 108 over 68. Now it should be 147. All that pressure on me up there at that meeting and the eating has whopped the thing right up. And that's not even drinking beer. That's just eating foods that I've gone off my normal diet of lemons and crushed ginger, crushed garlic and apple cider and then um, shea seeds, uh, kale. Mixed in my porridge and a bit of sugar. There, that's what I've been eating lunch, breakfast and dinner. That, just that. And lost 4.5 kgs. I might have just stacked on a little bit but I'll go in, I'm going down to the gym tomorrow and have a weigh-in and see how I, I, I can uh, exercise for the first time for a long time because of all these things going on. Uh, uh, with uh, um, the court hearing. It was a screaming success. I must say it was a screaming success. And the uh, Paramount Chiefs uh, have um, uh, um, made me a, a, a surrogate king with a kōrewai and also the marae, Te Ungawaka marae uh, let us have the quarterways to for the occasion because now they are part of it. See, they are part of this process 
of Manna Fenua. Tanuta Fenua, whatever you want to call it, but to put history back in its original state before the colonial people from Australia came and mucked it up. They're going to get the bill because we made an order, Mr. John Key, to arrest you for your Panama Papers bank fraud and the eight point star that belongs to us on our flag. Who gives you the right to go to Australia, come back here, put it on, then go back to Australia? What right do you have to violate our flag and the eight point star that is our St. Patrick's Order Authority of Municipalities and Land Rent Collection? Rents, fines, administrative costs for running the Whakamininga's business and the British to correct your justice system because we waltzed into the district court, Auckland District Court, and pulled out the registrar of families and served her the notices for her to read what just happened, transpired on the Ngawaka Native Magistrate Grand Jury Trial Court in our own jurisdiction of this flag. It's legal, it's enforceable, and it's an authority of its own. And then we went to the police station and issued them notice to read just what happened and who is a paramount chief. Three of them. The oldest one, war veteran, 90 years old, Samuel Clark or Hedowini Kaka. He's the immigrant from Britain with his Clark family that came here and immigrated here into Kaitai in the Hokianga region. And they were part of the land transactions. Now that's him as settled with the local Moriori chief. The Manukau's, but in particular Manahi Parapara Mohini, JP, Justice of the Peace, who is a descendant of the Moriori directly to Rekohu country, not island, country in Chatham Islands. And so the Maori of the New South Wales changed that title and put Farakauri there from here to there. The Manukau name came from there to here, the Hikurangi name came from there to here, the Auraki South Island came from there to here, the Raki Mount Egmont came from there to here. Those Toi Kairako names. The Tupunas from the East Cape and up to the Wairua, same toy. You see? So all that history has been whipped under the Queen's umbrella in Australia, New South Wales, and now Canberra, running under their own sovereignty, borrowed over here. They're borrowing each other's mana that they have created out of thin air through their Maryland court. That is the problem with Cook Street. It's a bad title. The British are now ordered by these paramount chiefs to correct it. You see, it's gone through into Westminster as a complaint against the justice system that doesn't work for us. It works for only the elite people that are raking the money in the Rothschild banks for making war with this war flag for pirates. It's our flag to stop pirates. You got them here, Judith Collins stole the logs for the Chinese. The Kauri logs, dug them out and split the line for the fuel going to the airport and stopped all the planes. This is just straight out greed of corporate thuggery. 
and not for the interests of the public of New Zealand, they defrauded. They've been doing it all along. We've caught them out. They've arrested me as a surrogate king, took my shirt. It's still in the police station. I've left it there as Exhibit B for them taking it off me for against me as Exhibit A as proof that I'm impersonating a king when I'm actually is the surrogate king. Just prove it. And now the police, we're going back there a second time. They have to clean them out. Not the police, but the landowners who have defrauded the land title of its original Moriori interests. Not financial interests, but land interests. Where did they get it from? Who did they get it from? They got it off their Maoris that they created out of thin air. The name Maori. It has no factual basis. The Maori Land Court has no factual basis because it's been created by Australia. Pirates in Wellington, in their government. No checks and balances. Nobody can stop them because they made acts, many, many acts to stop anybody getting to them. They've legislated all King Williams acts out, but guess what? We've got a magistrate court in that one book that's got King William's laws in it. Here. Right here. 1984 pages in this magistrate court. This is all you need to form a magistrate, native magistrate court, straight to Westminster Magistrate Court and straight to Edinburgh Magistrate, magistrate Court with this, with the Moriori title in here and seven years of King William the Fourth Act and it's got all the bad acts in there for pirates. You see, it's got the bad acts in there. It's got the New South Wales, etc. Government Acts, 1837, to get rid of them. Right? Robbery from the Person Act, 1837. That's what Julius Collins for robbing the people. That's the police minister. Robbing the people. For who? For her and her Chinese husband. Free trade agreement they set up between themselves for their own private interests. So, <coughs> Exchequer Bills Act 1835. See, everything in our time. So that's what I'm using <coughs> with the pound note <coughs> against the crooks. <coughs> I'm still coughing. Still coughing. <coughs> and the temperature's up. Execution of Judgment Acts 1831. There you go. Execution Act. It, it, it gets grisly because they've legislated it out. Well, we, we've got the legal right to use these because we haven't used them yet. We, have, we haven't used our flag yet. We're, we're, we're using it now. It's legal. <coughs> Buckingham Palace Act, 1831. There. <coughs> Admiralty Act, 1832. There. 1832, Admiralty Act, stick on it, court martial law. That's what happened with Cook Street. I'll find, I'll look through here and find an act for that, for Cook Street. Embezzlement Act, Embezzlement Act, 1832, C4, there, embezzling the public. You see? You can just pick them off and charge them with Bank of England Act, 1833. Yeah? Bound note. We legislate the bank note in with, because these are our acts when our, with our king, the Dutchman. Right? We can use them. We are using them. The Bank Notes Act, 1833. The Bank of England Act, 1833. There you go. Eh? And this is one for you people in the government of Wellington. Commissioners of Lunacy Act, 1833. You're going to go mad. You're going to go mad. Grand Jury, Ireland Act, 1833. We've got a Grand Jury running in Tuunga Wakamaroi, but I've called it the Auckland Native 
Magistrate Court. So you see, we've got 19 A4 pages of X that are unblemished from that time we got this flag in 1834. See? Insolvent Debtors India Act, 1834. The flag is 1834. There. We use the India Acts. The King George III in the Acts, but King William IV has duplicated those Acts in our time of this flag. Summary Convictions Ireland Act 1834. You can go down this Act and pull out any Act on Cook Street and you'll, you'll find heaps. <clears throat> Crown Lands, Scotland Act, 1835. Customs Act, 1835. But we only go to 1834. <coughs> this flag. We're not going to 1835. We're cutting off 1834. 20th of March, 1834. That's it. <coughs> Chantry Island Act 1835. So there you go. This is a, this is a magistrate court document with all the historic facts in it. Forgery Act 1837. There. Just before 1838, when the New Zealand Company switched the titles into the Australian titles. Trials for Felony Act 1836. Bankruptcy Ireland Act, 1837, that's going to go right on top of the head. Municipal Corporations England Act, 1837. Municipal Rates Act, 1837, there we go. That's us with the eight point star on this flag. Four quarters of the earth. You can't mistake it. <coughs> So this book is online. I'm going to copy it tomorrow, screen print it, and put it online with its signatures. I'm going to show you the signatures of the Paramount Chiefs. The Paramount is equal to a king in commercial status. I hope this is the one I saw. Yeah, it is. Panicking the last few days because I've been tied up with a lot of people asking questions, and so it took a lot of my time. And with our website, with our new girl, um, Cecile De Hoods is doing our website, mypowerhouse.com, and getting it cranked up. Yeah, here we go. Here's the signatures. I've accidentally stamped it twice with the Moai, but that's okay. Got a bit happy with the stamp. And the other stamp is of um, um, King William IV, Hongi Hika, and Te Rawaikato Whareherere, Manukau at 1820 to 1834, and Thomas Kendall, Bishop, that took them over to Cambridge University in England to learn English and um, Hong Hika chose to do the military and Te Rawakato Wharehere Manukau did the transactions and the land transfer titles to King George IV and then the flag and the Admiralty ship and treaty grounds there of our title is that ship. That's our business. And then we got Mani, ma, ma, mohi, ma, Manahi Mohini, Parapara, ma, Manahi Parapara Mohini, the Justice of Peace with his court stand, 
who needed justice and peace with these documents, is acting on the Queen's bench court side and on the King's bench court side. So he's acting in two capacities. So we've stamped the acts. We've stamped the acts as enforceable. We're enforcing all these acts straight back to the Execution of Judgments Act 1831. <clears throat> try and find another act that's the Hanging and Chains Act is in here. And that's for anybody who breaks, who pirates this plan and pirates our laws, these laws. We're going straight back to those laws and as far back as King George IV, but we're using this one first because it's lethal on anyone breaking these laws. Admiralty Act 1832, Arms Act 1832, Payment of Creditors, Scotland Act 1832, there we go, C35. Payment of credit, we're the creditor, the sheriff, with the eight point star on our flag. They haven't legislated, they can't legislate us out of the 1834 British contract. They can legislate, they legislated the 1835 out, but that's third party. Everything on the Queen's side is third party. Bank Notes Act 1833. Bank of England Act 1833, Buckingham Palace Act 1833. We can change all these with these. As as there's no king there, I'm acting king, surrogate, with these chiefs as contractor to the British Royal Navy. Customs Act 1833. So there's plenty writs of execution act 1833. Here we go. Writs of execution act.